It's the halfway point in the season. It feels like a, a long road, doesn't it? Well, at halftime, it yeah. was the half, yeah. halfway and a half point. And, but what a great crowd. Uh, you know, we broke another mm -hmm. record in great weather, as you say. And, you know, it was an out-of-conference game, but I think our guys really looked at it like another chance to get better. Homecoming, as we've been mentioning, and here the king lined up there by the Ohio State Marching Band, the crown, and then king and queen, of course, and Jim Carsados set you up. I don't know, he talked to the team this morning, got him sure going. did. At our captain's breakfast, uh, he addressed the team, as did Tom Cousineau, who was the silver anniversary captain. Flip the coin, and it goes San Jose State's way, and they try a little trickery. The West Coast teams like to do that once and again. Now, C. Grant would have none of that, and, and I'll tell you this. They had some good plans. They came at us with, with some good things and executed, but I thought our guys kept playing. Fourth down here, and a go for it right off the top. And again, Matt Wilhelm seems to make fourth down plays all year long. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a big play, and, and that, that was not a typical West Coast play. So they came and tried to play a little Midwest uh, on fourth and short, and that was huge for us. Kremsel back to pass, and what a great day. He has had efficiency in this game. Well, he really did. He threw the ball extremely well. Our protection was solid there. You saw him step up, and uh, Michael Jenkins ran a crisp route, and, and that's a big first down. Here a little play fake into Maurice Claret, and he finds Michael Jenkins again, and, and uh, but we caught him over there in a little bit of man coverage, and it was, it was good to see things clicking. Jenkins both times on the pickup, and then you go to the run, and Maurice Claret. Cleans up the work here on the first drive of the game. Well, you see the big guys on the right side and led in there by Ben Hartsock and Brandon Joe, Robbie Sims, Adrian Clark was over there, uh, Ivan Douglas. Uh, good drive, especially the momentum switch with that stop by our defense to cash in was big. Scoring early is something the Buckeyes are used to. Scoring in the first quarter, scoring on first drives. All nice things out to a 7 to nothing lead, and the defense stands right up again. Again, there you see Matt Wilhelm filling it up, and we're going to have our greatest run test that we've had to date this coming week with Wisconsin, but it's good to see us squash the run. They ended up with zero rushing yards for the entire game, and it's because a lot of pressure like that, you make them one-dimensional, which is what we try to do each week. Now, that's right. Uh, C. Grant did a good job there. The rest of the guys uh, up front kind of set it open for him, and he went and made the play. Back on offense, a neutron man cheering you on there, and you get up top, complete to Jenkins once again. A favorite target here. I don't know, a little, little different passing scheme maybe in the short passing game this week? Well, they were really bunching up uh, nine guys in the box, and we felt like we needed to, to do a couple things out in the perimeter, and and our guys did a good job of executing a couple new little wrinkles that we had for them. A couple crossing patterns, and notice there sprung some guys free as well as the drive moves forward into the second quarter. Second and seven, Jenkins again. Again, a, a nice little play action fake, and Mike Jenkins, I think it was Chris Vance, cleared out the area for him, and Craig Krenzel threw it in there. We were forced to go for a field goal, but uh, Mike Nugent knocked it through the middle. Good protection, good snap and hold. 36 yards for Mike Nugent up and good in a 10 to nothing lead. Nugent 13 straight on the season at that point. That'll date back to one last season as well. So 13 straight as the Ohio State record books are concerned. Here again, they did a good job throwing the little screen passes in. And uh, they came up with some good thoughts, and they had some quick people. We talked to you all week long about the speed that San Jose State has, and has a good tackle by Donnie Nicky. That was big. Great play by Donnie Nicky, trailing that receiver and running him down across the field. They did a good job of hustling up to the line of scrimmage and faking, and they caught us uh, with an inside-outside man-to-man coverage call, and uh, they ended up with a touchdown. And Again, good scheme work on their part. Interesting play there, and 10-7 the count right now, but back quickly on offense, and the response comes from Jenkins once again. Another fake toss there, and, and Craig threw it back on the slant route to Mike Jenkins. Uh, we just felt that it was important to establish both the run and the pass in this game because we're going to have to do it the rest of the year. Here you see a nice second look. Craig Krenzel finds Chris Vance with a great catch. The primary target was Mike Jenkins. He was covered, and he found Chris over top. Some big mitts out there hauling that one in. 38 yards on the pass completion, and one of the prettier throws we've seen from Krenzel. I'll tell you, it was a great throw, and, and couldn't have been done without great protection. 17-7, the count goes. The fans in the south stands enjoying it as well, and the defense back, pinning their ears back, and the defensive play here by C. Grant again. That was a huge play. Uh, the guys in front of them set it up well, and then Mike Kudla came in and, and uh, scooped it up. We were teasing them after the game that a 300-pound lineman caught him, but uh, Mike Kudla is a big play guy as well. Freshman coming in there making huge plays. Dr. Fitzgerald Hill wondering what's hitting his team now. It was a good-looking uh, draw play out of the shotgun, and 
And you see Maurice Claret behind some great blocking, uh, sprung it loose. And I think as we spread things out, both the run and the pass could become, uh, you know, a little bit more of a, of a balance as we went. 20 yards on the pickup, and Claret, once again, you go full house here, and Claret picks his way through. Well, it was a little check by Craig Krenzel. He picked which direction we were going to go. It could have gone either way in the straight tee, and uh, the best look was to the right, and uh, we got that big touchdown. How about the defensive play by C. Grant to force the fumble when it's first and goal from the 10 for them, and you drive straight down and score? That's a 14-point swing right well, there. Well, it really is, and the emotional swing of that, and not to mention the physical pounding that I think their quarterback took. Our guys came after him pretty good, and their receivers got hit hard. Uh, nice scheming by our defensive staff. They kind of picked apart that protection and found that if, if they let their end go down inside, they could get C. Grant uh, to delay blitz and come in, and he has the acceleration to make a big play. And I think that, that was a big hit two different times, yeah. one on the fumble and one on a force uh, poor pass. And it sends you into the locker room with the lead. We're at halftime here when we come back. It's second half highlights from the Horseshoe on a homecoming Saturday. Football and you have the lead and that's huge as we went to break we're talking about Maurice Claret a little a little different wearing gloves this week I don't know is that something they mentally just wanted to pull together and keep the ball in his hands I don't know I didn't even notice that it wasn't uh, cold no it wasn't <laughs> cold out there uh, you know he focused real hard this uh, week on holding on to the football which he always has I think even a little bit more impetus in that direction but he was very anxious to get out and show himself yeah. that he was going to handle the ball well, and I thought he did a good job with that, and thought all of our guys did. And the point we made off the top as you take the field, again, you know after the opening kickoff goes their way that you are going to get the ball with a lead, and a solid lead at that. And second and five, we're going to pick it up offensively here for the Bucks. Here you see a little bit of motion, and again, this time we did what we call a little uh, stutter-type play where we'd been throwing that short hitch and so forth, and he went and pretended he did the hitch, and then took off running on the go route and well executed thrown on time which is the key to the to the deep ball and a big home run I stand corrected that's the first play right after that turnover and that's when you want to hit them big, yeah isn't that's it? that's right you sure do and and uh, plus you want to hit them big when they get the ball back too like we're doing there our guys are all over them they had decided maybe they weren't going to win this game so they're going to work on their run game and our guys would have none of that. Loss of nine, and that is uh, sending San Jose State nearer to that zero that they came up with at the end of the game. Fourth quarter action now. We moved the football in there, and you see Maurice Hall, good cut there on a little uh, sweep play from the gun. Got us down in close, set up an opportunity for Lydell Ross, I believe, uh, on the next play. To, uh, it was interesting. He was on the sideline. Uh, when Maurice ran that play, and I asked him to call the play. I said, well, give me a play. They'll score a touchdown. So he called that play. So I told him from now on he can call the goal line plays. Did he call his own number he there? Oh, absolutely. Okay, sure beautiful. You wouldn't expect anything else nope, from him. That's right. Ross in for the touchdowns. 47-7 to at this point. And again, it's still second-team offense, but Scott McMullen looking like a first-teamer here, hooking up with Drew Carter. Yeah, Scott McMullen was 8 for 9, and that was supposed to be like an 8- or a 10-yard route, but they pressed us, and he took the hot read and threw the ball up there and, and uh, moved us down to get in field goal range and to get up over that half-century mark. And this is the 15th straight, and that ties a school record for Mike Nugent. From 28 yards away, he and Vlade Yanikievsky. I won't make you say it. He... Uh, Ties him 15 in a row, so the next one he gets to punch through the uprights will set the new school record. We see Velada Yankievsky all the time. Here you see Maurice Hall working on the toss sweep, and uh, you know, as we've said all along, we've got a number of good backs, and, and it's just a matter of don't have that many footballs, and plus we want to throw the ball around. You see Reggie Arden uh, catching the football there on a little shallow route, and, and again, I think Scott McMullen showing that he's very aware and he has a grasp on what we're trying to do on offense. Always looks for a big tight end from Ironton, so Arden knows to be expecting the ball. Well, the good thing about Scott, he, whatever's there, he gives it. Good looking run by Maurice Hall there. A lot of good linemen getting in there and have a chance. Nick Mangold's in there. Scotty Kuhnheim is in there. Uh, Rob Sims continues to play. Andre Tyree is in there. Bam Childress. It's good to get guys some playing time. Your lone back is Jaja Riley. Talking about getting guys in there as well. Well, you know what? I thought Jaja might break that one for a second. It was good to see him get uh, get a carry there. And we even had a couple real new names there. Jim Otis. There hasn't been a first down run by Jim Otis here in this stadium for maybe 30 years. Long, long time. And but that uh, 18 in there. When we first saw 18 come out, we thought that 85 would be following. We might see a field goal. Oh, with I that. see. Okay. But uh, 18, not Andy Groom. It's Jim Otis in this case. And yeah. you put the finishing touches on a 50 to 7 win. 
You know, it was a lot of fun for guys to uh, have an opportunity to play. It was a lot of fun to see our former captains and see our alumni and see our stadium attendance record broken. And the reality of it is, though, we know now we're headed into the real season, yeah. six straight weekends of Big Ten football, starting with one of the hardest places in America to play, Camp Randall Stadium. You got to go to Camp Randall. That's uh, no question there. But uh, to wrap up this game, these guys come in as the top-rated takeaway defense in the country. 24 turnovers they have forced, and then you go and take four from them and put one away yourself. Well, that was the difference in the game. Had we not had those takeaways, mm -hmm. uh, they were making some plays, and they were getting out there, and they've got great speed, and they were averaging 33 points a game, and they didn't play a slouch for a schedule. Washington, Stanford, uh, SMU last weekend. I mean, they played against some good football teams. Uh, Illinois, they beat at Illinois. So I mean, it wasn't like we were playing a poor team. We got the takeaways and didn't turn it over. That was the difference. Four and two team. They're four and three now, and used to playing on the road. But the Buckeyes get the job done. At